My name is Jiali, and I am from Providence, Rhode Island, and I'm a hip hop artist in Bloomington, Indiana. And so I'm sitting in my room while my mama saying go study Listening to beats, playing seeds while I go nutty My buddy's rolling, we living on the swisher Spitting to the game, call me a good kisser What brought me to Bloomington was a track scholarship uh, In high school I did the hammer and the weight And I was one of the top in the country And I uh, ended up writing my own ticket to Indiana University because of it They told me get ready for the real world I tell them how when I can't even find a real girl And so I moves on preparing for a dream life Dream house, dream car, harboring my dream I started rapping at the age of uh, at the age of 11. I was at a uh, summer camp called Camp Meehan, and there was uh, this kid there named AJ Bruce. Uh, right now he's a photographer, and uh, he was dope. He was like the nicest MC I ever heard. He was just like. He could just go right off the, the top of the head and just spit some of the coldest bars, some of the coldest lines you ever heard. And uh, he ended up putting me on to who inspired him, uh, like Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, uh, DMX. He put me on to so many different artists, and that's when I took it upon myself. I was like, yo, this is pretty cool, and I think I have the capacity to do it as well. And, I, and that's when I started really practicing it. Boss for my black folks, stack slow. Even when that money comes fast, whenever father, when dreams, the money will come last. Yeah, this is the one I, 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 I got to listen to. And uh, the song, uh, Better Things. Better Things. And then I'd say, check out Money. Money's a good song as well. And then Window Shopping. Those are three joints that I, that I personally my favorite. So it's still a little too fast. We're gonna bring it down to 160, 750. And I started producing at the age of 18. Um, I had I had a mixtape that I wanted to get done in a week uh, because I was going back to school. So I, I came back for summer and I, had, I was going back to school and I was with my friends in my, in my mom's basement and we all wanted to make this mixtape on like a $100 blue snowball microphone. And um, I chopped up uh, the theme song of I Dream a Genie and I uh, put some drums to it and that was the first beat that I, that I ever produced. And yeah, man, so I, I really dug into it and got to it, you know? Right now I'm going through uh, my vault of samples, you know, I chopped them up in Audacity, got some four and two bar loops, and uh, I mean this one right here is called So Beautiful. My biggest influences as a producer, there's so many. Just Blaze, huge. I love, I love his drums. His drums are, they sound so realistic and the, and the space that he creates with his drums, it just, it kind of, it captivates your mind and puts you into the session. And uh, I also like the way he, he samples as well. Uh, Kanye West, just for, for his soul beat, Decompose, who produced a lot of stuff for Binary Star, One Below, Sinan Silla, The Pete Rocks, we have the DJ Premiers. Uh, one of my favorite albums from him was A Moment of Truth by Gangstar. I was him and Guru. Um, oh, and then Ninth Wonder, Can't Forget Ninth Wonder, Ninth Wonder, I mean, he just, he finds those, those samples that, like, you, you necessarily wouldn't be able to make them work, but somehow he flipped them, or somehow he, he, he just chopped them in a way that just lines up perfectly. The rest, all that. You know, Beethoven, he went deaf and he was still writing out his symphonies and his, and his, uh, his orchestration, you know what I mean? And it's, I, I feel the same way, it's like only I can hear what I have in my head and only I can get it out in a fashion that, that, fits, that fits me. So that's the, really the reason why I produce. I mean, I'd love to work with Kanye, Just Blaze, all these other producers, but right now, I'm the only one really making the music that, that, that I want to be on, I want to rap to and I want to put out. It's like, that's what I love about sampling, it's like, when you hear the song that got sampled, it takes you to a whole other place, because it's like, wow, that was genius. Like, it really is, it's almost, it used to be, for me, it used to be a point of like, damn, if I would've got to that song first, 
then I would have made that dope beat. But now it's like, mm, I, don't, I don't think about the, I don't, I don't think it's like that. It's you literally have to have that ear for the chop. You know what I mean? If you don't have that ear for the chop, you can you cannot make a beat. I promise you that. You can have the best songs, the, the, the best, you know, old school 70s, 60s joints. You ain't gonna make nothing. I had a, uh, it was Martin Luther King, um, it was a Martin Luther King Expression Showcase. It was a talent show and I got to perform with um, Ill Intentions and then I also got to perform with Jitty Dawn. And uh, we actually won the, the uh, Viewer Choice Award and we won the talent show and it was, it was amazing. I got to perform the song that I, I really like, it's called The Real, and I was in my African garb, and uh, you know, Jared Don was in that African garb, and, and, and Ill Intentions was the same way, and I had a tuba, um, I had some African drums, and then I had uh, this, this young lady named Pearl Scott, and she's just a wonderful singer, and I had her scatting, she's like, she, she's really into jazz, so I had her scatting on the track, and I mean, it was just, it was an amazing feeling to bring all that together. First, to get through the rehearsals, you know, and then, you know, because of Rachel Awayemi, you know, she set all the sessions up and whatnot, and, and just to have everything come to fruition, you know what I mean? I, when I first got into the talent show, I saw it in my head. I was like, yo, I'm about to, I'm, I'm about to uh, have a great performance. I'm about to win this talent showcase. I know I'm going to. I see it. Like, I literally saw it in my head. And then to actually, like, live it and, and have that reaffirm what I saw, that was one of the greatest feelings that I've had um, within my career, actually. To my soul, dealing with it like a lifer. Plan on getting higher, breathing out water as I'm looking through the fire, sending praises to the Maya. Back on, we back up, back for your ass us. No homo, the struggle, making words and actions match up. A couple thoughts on me looking at the future, and in the end, came off the bench as the best shooter. As a lyricist, I want to convey a message of progression. I think that as human beings, you know, we, we were put on this earth not to be stagnant. You know, either you're 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 uh, you're green and growing, or you're ripe and rotting. You know what I mean? There's no there's no stagnation. So in anything that any of us do, I believe that there should be a sense of progression there. And within my within my lyrics, you'll find that you'll find progression on on four different levels, uh, community wise and environmental wise, um, spiritually wise. You'll find progression as well. Uh, well, at least the message of, of going towards that mentally and then physically as well. And, you know, I just want everybody to realize that, you know, the work, the work and the job is never done. You know, there's always more work to do and there's always a higher level to reach and there's always a better way um, to, to be, you know, yourself. There's, there's, you always have more capacity, capacity than be what you are now. My aspirations as a hip hop artist, uh, once again, to become a national and international act. I also want to do a lot of the business as well. I want to set up a college tour. I want to set up a national tour and a national tour as well. I also want to get into art artist management and development along with my manager, Rachel Awayemi, and uh, just really spread the message and keep progressing as an artist, not just as an artist, but as, as a lyricist and as a rapper. Um, there's, there's more to hip hop than just the music. You know, you have graffiti, you have fashion, you have turntablism. Uh, you have b-boying, and then you have uh, the, 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 lyr the lyricist, the rapping, you know what I mean? So I want to be able to incorporate all five pillars of hip-hop into everything I do with that. I, I like to teach, so I would love to set up a program in, you know, in, in, in whatever school system will allow, that will allow me to um, and actually teach um, hip-hop from a personal development standpoint. You know what I mean? As opposed to just trying to make it as an entertainer or trying to make it because there's lots of money involved. Hey, how about using hip hop as a tool to decide what goals you want to achieve or to be specific in terms of how you want to develop as a person, your character, your desire, your drive, your discipline, your determination, your dedication. All those things I want to be able to use hip hop as an outlet to promote. So I mean, you know, teaching is always something that, that comes with, with ability and with skill, and I feel like I have the ability and skill to do that no matter what aspect I'm doing. Bloomington has shaped me in a, as an artist by allowing me the outlet to mess up and to learn as I go, you know, in terms of like planning events and then, you know, my stage presence and all those different types of things and being critiqued, how the fans interact. It's a lot, it's, it's, Bloomington's been very forgiving. 
You know, and I think that's one thing I like about the Midwest in general is like they're very forgiving. Because if I did a lot of stuff that I did here on the East Coast or on the West Coast, I would have been thrown out of clubs. You know what I mean? I would have been, I would have been, you know, not given a second chance. But I like Bloomington because it's really a learn-as-you-go type of type of deal, and everybody respects what you're doing, no matter how different you are, no matter how different what you're doing is. Everybody will at least give you the opportunity to let them know what it is you're doing, how you're doing it, and if they would like to be a part of it as well. So I, I really do thank Bloomington for that, for, for allowing me to, to progress and, and giving me those lessons and not, and, not, uh, and, and not showing me failure, but showing me defeats and allowing me to learn from those to be, become an even better winner in this, in this industry. I gets busy on the microphone. <laughs> yeah, I mean. From the pulpit till I'm toothless, ain't gonna whip.